Air quality is basically defined by the concentration of different pollutants, which includes particulate matter, nitrogen oxide, sulfur oxide, ammonia, so on, in the atmosphere. Air quality index is a metric which is used to communicate about air quality. So it's basically a scheme which tells you about the severity of air pollution. So when we talk about sources, we talk about which are the sources which are actually contributing to air pollution in a particular region. So if you talk about Delhi, Delhi is in that unfortunate position where it is impacted by both local sources, which are basically within Delhi city limits, as well as sources which are outside Delhi city limits. So if we look at sources which are within Delhi city limits, it's primarily vehicles. Vehicles, of course, is the primary contributor, followed by road dust, open waste burning, and a little bit of the small scale industries which are there located in Delhi and its vicinity. When we talk about sources coming from outside, of course, as we know, stubble burning is a seasonal contributor. But other than that, there is also some amount of influence which comes from industries outside Delhi, brickkins, as well as the thermal power plants. So if we need to fix Delhi's air pollution, the key is to control both local and regional sources. So local action and regional coordination is what is needed to actually fix Delhi's pollution problem. The vehicular pollution problem is extremely peculiar. It's one of those sources which emits, you know, right at the breathing level. So people, you know, tend to get a little more exposed to it. Also with vehicles moving, it also results in upliftment of dust from the road. So vehicles are also indirectly contributing to road dust as well as the tailpipe emissions. And there is only one way to cut down emissions from vehicles, which is, you know, you change the way people move. So which means that we need to focus on amping up the public transit infrastructure in Delhi. If people are using private vehicles and the focus should be on transitioning the vehicular technology, of course, there is a push towards electric vehicles, but increasing number of personal electric vehicles also doesn't make sense because that is eventually going to result in, you know, increased number of vehicles on the roads. Therefore, the only way to cut down emissions is for people to transition from private motorization to shared motorization and the shared motorization also needs to be cleaner in terms of fuel efficiency as well as emissions. There are 13 pollution hotspots which have been identified in Delhi and Delhi government has been focusing on reducing pollution around this ho these hotspots. But what is important to understand here is that air pollution does not rec you know, recognize boundaries. So polluted air can flow from one part of the city to other part of the city. While localized action is important, we need coordinated action across the region. So ramp up local action, but at the same time also ensuring that there is coordinated action across the Indo-Gangetic Plain to actually ensure that not just Delhi, but also other cities in the Indo-Gangetic Plain see air quality benefits, not just in winter, but around the year. There is a permissible limit for air pollution in the country, which is 60 microgram per meter cube. Technically, whenever pollution exceeds the 60 microgram per meter cube on a daily basis, we should consider that air around us is polluted. This is the unfortunate issue that, you know, we become serious about air pollution only when we think about air pollution in terms of AQI 500, 550 and the term public health emergency kicks in. But we need to be cognizant about the air pollution levels that we are breathing throughout the year. Now, responding to this very issue, like you said, in 2019, uh, the government of India came up with its flagship program, which is the National Clean Air Program. It's a well-crafted program because it not just tracks air quality improvements, but it also tracks action across different cities. 
and the performance that which is being evaluated of cities is also based on air quality improvements as well as an action so there is an incentive mechanism for cities to actually act on improving the air quality of course given that it was launched in 2019 we have not really seen drastic benefits in terms of improvement across city but there is action going on around the cities i'll give you a simple statistic when the national clean air program was launched in 2019 there were close to 130 continuous air quality monitoring stations today across the country we have over 400 continuous monitoring stations which means the there is a focus on also improving the data availability around air pollution levels in the country along with monitoring air quality is also equally important to monitor how we are doing on urban infrastructure you know the number of unpaved roads the length of unpaved roads in a city number of waste burning sites or you know whether there is door to door segregation happening around residential colonies if we want to reduce air pollution we need to cut down emission at sources there is no alternative to cutting down emission at sources smoke towers and water sprinkling are techniques which claim to improve air quality once the emission has already happened but they don't work and this is this is the only ultimate truth that if you want to solve for air pollution we have to cut emissions at sources